a haunting lake club horror. In this world, there is real evil in the darkest shadows, in the most ordinary places. There are the true stories that are innocent and unimaginable. At a lake club, every night is full of life. And when the music ends, the crowds go home and the place is as cold as a crypt. An angry ghost stalks the employees and warns that one of them is about to die. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When you open nightmares come reality. For decades of late up in Springfield and analysis. But served as wage station for gamblers and musicians. Not all of them were simply passing through. One for one soul the late club was a trap and death with just the beginning, Siren Wales, in the summer of nineteen seventy four. Late club owners Phil Dean and Tony Badardo show the club to a prospective renter named Bill Carmine. Hey Bill, nice to meet you. I had a construction business construction business, my dad and brother. Due to the energy crunch, the business failed. We kind of pulled our money together and started looking for something we could invest in. Well, when we found out that old Lake Club was up for grabs, Bill don't know if I mentioned this or not. But you know, we had an outstanding entertainment here. Mm-hmm. Ella Fitzgerald, the place fires, fires open in 1941. Here, legendary musicians like Nat King Cole, Ella Fitzgerald played to crowds of up to 1,200 rests. The club has been closed for the past six years, but the owners have taken good care of their property. All right, Bill, take care. Call me later, I will. Let me show you the bar. Sure. Oh, we'll walk around. around. The whole place is ready to go. I mean, turn on the lights. We can come in. The glasses were all there. The chairs were all there. It was almost like a tunnel tree. Walk in and open up. And show you the rest. I'll show you the rest of the place, okay? All Bill needs to re- Bill needs to reopen the nightclub. There's a liquor license for the brand band. Right down here. Mechanical room. Down the hall is your office. Paul Dean finalises the deal in the back office. There you go. Yes, sir. Bill notices a hole in the ceiling. Uh, what we got here? What is that? What is that? Is that there? A water leak or something? Does he, you can fix that. You can't, do you? Yeah, that's good. That'd be good as new. No problem. Code, couple of days. Couple of days. Good as new. Dean quickly reassures him that the caretaker, Dusty, will fix the problem. All right. All right. Each day, Bill spends long hours alone in the club, getting the place ready for business. One afternoon, piano music playing. I can hear the piano playing in the back. Piano music pl- continues. Hello, piano music, con- music continues. Anybody in there? Piano music continues. Piano music stops. There was nobody there. I know I heard the piano. I felt a t- little chill. I uh, an upbeat jazz music plays. It's like you're walking down a dark street sometimes. A dog runs out and you embarks and you can get the hair on the back of your neck. You're feeling needles all over your body. Is anybody out there? Bill searches the building but finds no one. In the back of my mind, I keep wondering, did I really hear her hurt? Playing a piano playing? I couldn't explain it, so I just shrugged it off. In the fall of 1974, a late cub opens under the management of Bill Carmine. When in the world finally got out, we opened the doors in the night. We were just completely overwhelmed. They drank us out of beer. We were out of booze. We ran out of ice. We made it through on the first night. I got a little better prepared for the second night. And it just kept going like this for a while. Bill quickly realises he can't run the club by himself. He turns to the musician, Tom Lesko. Here's six hundred and fifty dollars. Buy you guys a drink. I first became involved in the late club where a band was hired there. I met one of the owners who became friends. You do such you do such a good job. We could get rapport going with each other. Answer him if he wanted to invest. Ask him if he wanted to vest. I want you to come in, maybe manage the place. It's an interesting scenario. I jumped on it. Hey, I wasn't I went to well want Hey, I want to welcome everyone to the late club. 
I'd like to introduce you all of you. So we got some different entertainment here. The place is great. Upbeat jokes music plays. I thought it was great. Everything got along good. We had a good entertainment, good audience. Everybody enjoyed themselves. It's a fine place to be. I felt I couldn't wait to get to get to every night. Surprise, surprise. I realized the managers hold private parties for friends and employees. Over time, co-workers become like family. Should everybody be, be afraid? For a wait, waitress, Barbara Lard. It seems like the perfect working environment. I started working at the late club when I was 21 and a half. I was very young, very naive, and not in any way, shape, or form prepared that what happened could come, would come in the future. Instinct conversations laughs. Do you see that one girl? Interstate conversation sighs. It tells loudly, man, I was just suddenly surrounded by this cold chill. It's drafty cold. It could, it would just go right through you and just engulf your whole body. Tom assumes that he's neglected to turn off one of the air conditioning units. The basement, raspy moan, sighs. All right, raspy moan. Yeah. It's like someone was right behind you. Just very frightening, very frightening. Raspy moan, raspy breath. One night after closing, Tom Berlisco was terrifying. Totally failing, very feeling. If not alone, become extremely scared, run out of his place, and I left the lights and air conditioner running. I'm breathing, breathing heavily. This is something that you're kind of trying to rationalize. It's not happening, but it's happening. All right, I've got to get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. All right. Tom decides not to tell anyone about the experience. I thought sometimes you tell people this, this, these stories, look at you like you're a bit crazy. So I just opted to keep it to myself and see what happened. Upbeat jazz music plays. Later, to Bill tells Tom he's had something, some strange experiences inside the club. Are you sure you didn't see anyone? There's no one in there. I walked in right in there. The piano cover was down. I walked around all over the place. There was nobody there, man. I think the scariest thing was the unknown part about it. You don't know what was happening or who or what it was. And you can't let anyone know about this. All right. All right, bad for business. Tom and Bill didn't want to frighten employees or patrons. Guys, I need a broom. You really don't want that word to leak out. Otherwise, people won't want to come out and come to the bit, come to the business. For weeks, Tom and Bill didn't experience anything unusual. Hey, Tom, you got me, you got me to do me a favour. Yeah, what? I got a real important meeting. If you know what I mean, laughs. Can you get, do me a favour? Can you finish going, doing the money? Finish doing the money and then carry the carbon, carbon the receipts and books. All that. Yeah, no problem. All right, man. I'll see you tomorrow. One night after business hours, laughter, innocent conversations. You could hear a din of people talking, innocent conversations. You couldn't make out what they were saying, but you could hear a conversation going on. I started carrying a rosary because being a Catholic, I thought that would protect me against any evil or bad things that were going on in there. Innocent conversations. Hello? Anybody there? In seat conversations. Anybody in there? Anybody in there? Here? Yeah? Laughter. In seat conversations. Hello? Hi. First be breath. That is the morning I came to get that set up the next night. All the cash is still on the table. The safe is still open. Man, what? Oh, jazz. Sorry? You scared the hell out of me. Sorry. What's going on? What happened in here? Look, I know, I know. I know what it looks like. But, look. Something really crazy happened last night. What is it? I walked down the hall. I was looking everywhere for something. I couldn't see anybody. Nobody's around. And somebody was there. He said, it just scared the hell out of me. Him. He said he didn't really remember running out of here and leaving the money. He just knew he wanted to be out of here. There. In deep chat conversations, a strange event became more frequent. Events became more frequent. And two managers shared their experiences with trusted employees like Barbara Lard. All of us, Bill and Tom, would talk of different small things that had happened, but he really didn't believe that there was really a ghost there. It's something f fun to talk about, 
and something fun to laugh about. It didn't really, it couldn't truly believe. I didn't really, truly, really, truly believe. One day before the club opens for business. Do you hear that? We heard a trombone playing in the back. It was off, uh, I was, and it was off early for the band. It was, it was off early for the band to be there here. I couldn't, didn't hear anybody come through. Barbara is convinced that someone must let the band, let the band practice. A few years later, the band arrives. Hey, you, you're a trombone player, right? I said to the trombone player, did you leave and come back? No, that wasn't me. No, I heard you playing about an hour ago in the practice room. That you were pretty good. You was pretty good. No, I don't think so. We just got here. He said, I was never here. The band leader tells Barbara that, that 13 minutes earlier, they were in the restaurant eating dinner. Sorry, Duffy wasn't me. Their instruments were locked in the van. Come on, we thought it was just a joke. He was just teasing. He said, he's just not, he's not, we're not kidding you. He was with us at supper. We started hearing a trombone. Bill and Tom and all the employees started talking. Maybe there was something more going on here. Because all we, we all go, all go, all go, all these weird happenings. People were scared. The employees, the people came in, didn't really know anything was going on. But employees, they were scared. Even some of the bands that came in started to feel that there was something not right with the place. They approached us about it. Everyone started talking. There was something strange going on here. There's something going on. You've got to do something about it. The late club owners and employees tried to keep the burners just as running as usual. Got a nice place in here, man. Yeah, thank you. You book a lot of bands? Yeah, doing pretty well. One morning a salesman visits the club. I guess you, you're pretty busy. So what I got here is an automatic check writing. I figure, well, I'm going to let him do his bill. Tell him no. It's very simple. It has, it was checks written. You don't have to worry about buying a checkbook balance and all that. Imagine you can write your checks in it. It really makes it a lot simpler. You don't have to worry about the bookkeeping later. It's really simplifies the life. It makes your business run much smoother, easier. The bookmaker scared the hell out of him. Well, sorry about that. Don't the her uh, upbeat jazz music. The violence of this late this event convinces Bill he cannot ignore what's been happening. We were wondering what measures we could take. You can't close the doors of the business because you've got a problem here. So we kind of between a rock and a hard place spot. On this particular night, we packed to the gills. There were more people in there than we could shake us to get. Bartenders and waiters were going 19 mile an hour, trying to keep up with everyone. Unbelievable. The 12 women waiting in the line up there. we have got to go. Well, just go to my office. Go on. It's open. Just go ahead and use it. It's not, it's, if it's not open, come and see me. I've got the keys. Okay, thanks. When I go back to the office. It's very, very uncomfortable. It was very, very uncomfortable. I just was unsettled. I thought, oh, I'm just a little nervous because I've been so busy. Well, the owners, gosh, they're going to die, they're going to die. Ah, nightclub, they're going to die. Waitress Barbara Blard just believes that she'd seen a ghost. I just stayed there and I was in a state of shock. Barbara was wrong. She, she, was, she, she was just in terror. I'm like, I'm like, Barbara, what's the matter? I can't tell you. I can't tell you. You're all wrong, right? What happened? She was just panicky. I told her and said, well... You know, go back in the office and sit down. I know, I'm not going to do that down there. I mean, I'm never going back down, back there again. I told her to go ahead and take the rest of the night off. She was in total terror. i never seen her in, like, like that before. Hey, come on in. Take a seat. Gosh. Yeah, why didn't you give her narrator? Well, why didn't you? Why didn't you give her a narrator? The next day, Barbara describes a man she saw in the back office. Tell us what happened. What's wrong? When I was in there, he spoke to me. I said, what did he say? He, she said, I can't tell you. You didn't tell us. Why can't you tell me? Can't. I can't tell you. I can't. Are the owners? They're going to die. I can't. 
We can't help you out if you don't tell us about what he said to you. We need to know. Made a decision not to tell Tom and Bill. That was very difficult. I was so scared and want to weigh heavy on their minds. Bill decides to seek answers from someone who knows more about the club's history. He pays a visit to Dusty and the club's long-time caretaker. Everything's good, right? No problems. Okay. She was in the bathroom. She saw this guy. I mean, big guy. Bill Lowe gives Barbara a description of the ghost. About 6'2", big head, long... Big head, big, long moustache. That sounds like Rudy. Remember the guy I was telling you about? Remember? Dusty says, sounds like a former bartender named Rudy Kreiner. Rudy, you mean that's the guy you used to bartend here? Yeah, he used to bartend here. I've got a picture. That's him right there. Yeah, look at that. He gives Bill a group of photos taken when Rudy worked at the club. I showed these to Barbara. I'll get her to take a look at them. Trust me, everything's fine. You're doing a great job. Listen, all right. Bill takes the photos of Barbara. I want you to tell me, and he said, Do you recognize anybody? This is him. Who? That's who. This is the man I saw. This is the man I saw in the old office. This is him, okay. But it explains to the club owners of this well, Dusty told him. Can you know what? To the club, the days of Philip Dean and Tony Barraro ran the business. We have a lot in trouble here. He made a small fortune in tips from well, well, he'll pay to us at the club's illegal casino. He did a deal in December 1958. Please radio the club and put a dent in Rudy's earnings. I'll, I'll take care of it. By tomorrow, take care of it. Take care of it. The financial stress of the following years gave him screw-trained stomach ulcers. In 1968, Rudy was diagnosed with cancer. There was also rumours being accused of stealing money for the club. Of the years of financial troubles and physical pain, Rudy finally snapped, sighed, breathing, Heavily gunshot echoing. What was that noise echoing? It sounded like gunshots echoing, echoing. Get back, get back. Someone, everybody back. Don't come back this way. This is the guy that was in your office. Dusty said that Grady Connor was a Catholic. This Catholic himself, Tom was a fairy. Since suicide was wor worse sin than the Catholic could commit. He might be trapped between the planes of life. But when we when we found out it was Rudy, he is one perpetrating per 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 all this stuff around here. He was getting violent. It scared me and Tom even more. I don't know. I don't know, Barbara. A violent way and he died. He might, might, he might turn right around and use the violence again on somebody. That I knew and I thought just scared the hell out of me. Calm down, it's okay. All right, all right, calm down. Bill isn't aware that Barbara is harboring this terrible secret. Yes, I'm sure. Brody's ghost told her that one of the club owners is going to die soon. He put the gunshot to his mouth. He blew his head right off. He's not alive, so laughter is it to his conversations. It's been real. Good night. Carrying the secret of knowing that someone was going to happen. Be careful. Really affected me. Just weigh me so heavily, weigh so heavily on my heart, because I just did not adore Tom and Bill both so much. It just almost more than could help her end. Was lo lose either one of them. Hey, Bill, Siren wails in distance. Bill, we're going. Are we going for the two ambassadors of business owners? The future looks grim. Be careful. See you later. Wherever Barbara helps Tom or Bill close to the bar, she prays for their safety. Upbeat jazz music plays in the middle of a busy weekend night. The compressor of the beer taps suddenly loses pressure. All right, 
just calm down. I've got to go downstairs for a minute. Everything's okay. Bill goes into the basement to fix it. I wanted to go down and give it a swift kick to get, get, get it working. When I went down, the lights were all off down there. Raspberry moan. Sudden burst of compressed air starts Bill. Raspberry moan, raspberry moan. Bill is convinced the haunting is real. But he's embarrassed to discuss with his landlord, Bill Dean. Here you go, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, okay. See you later. Have a good night. You'll come by tomorrow, okay? Good night, guys. Thank you. Within weeks, Philip Dean suffers a fatal heart attack. Because of any warning, Barbara doesn't know how to respond to their sudden death. I had sorrow for the family, but it was much, but such great relief, too, because it was a bit Tom and Bill. It may sound cold or cruel, but that's how I felt, as well, and that was like relief. Barbara now feels it is safe to share the ghost of Rudy Coima. Told her, Where are you feeling? How are you feeling? Are you feeling? She says, I can tell you what Rudy told me now. He tell, said one of the owners was going to die. She was like, He was afraid to tell you. I, was, I, was, I thought it might be one of you two. God, that scared me. It still gives me the shakes. Tom and Bill wonder if Rudy Coima has had. Particularly Phil Dean's death, or if the ghost somehow caused his death. Did Rudy have something to do with it? Did he have enough energy that he stopped the owner's heart? The supernatural entity did murder Phil Dean. Bill fears the same could happen to him. Thought maybe he's not going to draw the line on a new one owner. We knew that something had to be done. But Tom suggested getting a priest a blessing in the place. But it's, uh, you don't know, there's still some things going on. Tom asked an old high school classmate, Gary Dealey, who for help, that he's a Roman Catholic priest. Tom asked him if he thinks an evil spirit could be haunting the club. I believe it is a spiritual realm we don't understand, but I do believe the Catholic Church also teaches that spirits can communicate with us in different ways. We in America don't like to believe these things because we are rational people. We are highly educated. That kind of belongs to the superstitious. But I think it's fair, far from superstitious. I think there is, there is a reality there. Hey guys, this is Bill Kerman. Mean. Hi Bill. Want, want me to show you the rest of the place here? Well, go down this hallway here. Within seconds. Ice cold presence of braces. Feel forever dilly. Wait a minute. What is it? You could feel you could you could feel expectations. And it felt like someone had left the door open and near, near the walking freezer. He says you certainly have something hairy. Bad stuff, huh? I know, it's creepy, very creepy. I'm right up in the here. You're right here. It's like to I like to walk the rest of the way alone. I started walking through the whole place on my own. And from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head, I knew there's something, someone with me. I could feel it. Raspy, raspy moan. Father Gary Dilly returns to the late club with two colleagues to perform a blessing, hoping to put the spirit of Randy Calder to rest. So what are we going to do, Tom? What are we going to do? We're going to go through the club every night room. We're going to bless them. That, f that, that way, f that way, f that way, thank you, Father. Be sure to catch the spirit. They're going to die and send him into the arms of the Lord. Could you? It's a chance. Father, would you leave? Yes, yes, I will. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us on the day of the battle. St. Michael, the Archangel, protect us and defend us, protect us, defend us on the day of battle. A prayer. They use a simple form of St. Michael, the Archangel Prayer. We believe that St. Michael and the Lucifer battle. We believe St. Michael is a powerful source for us. The Archangel defenders the day, us in the day of the battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. St. Michael, the Archbishop Angel, defend us in the day of the battle. 
Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray and do you, O oh, do you, O oh, Prince of Heaven, host by the power of God, God, cast into hell Satan, all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls, the divine people to God, cast into hell Satan, all the evil spirits that sent Michael the Archangel defend us in our need, battle, day of battle. We be our safeguard. The free peace move toward the back office where Rudy Crane committed suicide potentially the most dangerous area in the building. And all the evil spirits, may God rebuke him, St. Michael, defend us in our time of battle. Be a safeguard, may God rebuke him. We're going to die. To defend us in our day of the battle. Cast into hell, Satan, all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world. St. Michael, defend us in our time of our battle. These prayers may make the spirit angry. May God rebuke him. Be humbly pray, and when they get angry, you don't know what they're going to do. Father Delhi knows that the angry spirits can sometimes take possession of the living. They can attach them to a person that is in the room and try to invade their body and take them over. Father, we have to leave the room, this room. He suddenly said, now we are blessed. The place, let's get, back, get, let's get away back, away from the building. And what? The building's going to blow up. He said, it could possibly happen. That freaked me out. Father, we should pray now. Priest praying insistently. By the divine power of God, cast into hell. Satan. Oh, they wait outside for almost 30 minutes. When we go back it's in, something has changed. When I went back in the club, I didn't feel a cold chills. I didn't feel the hair go up on the back of my neck. I felt very comfortable here. It was much more peaceful. Really? Yes, sir. The building just became very quiet. The coldness was gone. Father, thank you. Father did he believe that Rudy had heard their prayers. Thank you, Father. Appreciate it. Rudy was stuck in time. He wanted people to know that he was there. He didn't want to be forgotten. I think that through our prayers, he was able to let, let go of this earth and go where he was supposed to be. The blessing puts an end to paranormal activity, but the popularity club begins to wane. We made it for about another six months, and we closed down. That's the one thing. I thought we should be, would be big, bright lights, I tell you. Hey, listen, after the blessing, I felt much more at peace. It was almost like, okay, and now Rudy can rest. He will be at rest to change my beliefs that there is an afterlife. Certainly, we don't know about it and sometimes you can d don't think about it but it is something that goes on after we die that's whatever that's left of us we're left we'll let you stay upstairs okay you'll take care you won't know all night and i'm all right if for all the night all this happened i never believed in ghosts a ghost i believe in now i don't care what people say say i know it knew it happened